Adolf Hitler had different plans, and he saved his strongest troops on the Western Front, entire SS divisions, he had SS Panzer divisions in reserve, he hid them. He brought troops in from Russia and hid those too. He hid them in the Ardennes Forest, and just about a week or two before Christmas of 1944, he put the most powerful armor force that he'd had at his disposal directly into the weakest part of the American lines. It was held by third-rate troops. The 101st Airborne was a terrific unit, but they had been bled white. They'd been fighting every day for six months. Those guys were just barely there. They were put into the Ardennes in order to recuperate. And the rest of the people were nothing but cooks and clerks. And all of a sudden, on one snowy morning, out comes Nazi armor, streaming like there's no tomorrow, and overran everything, pushed the Americans back 40, 50 miles. It's called the Battle of the Bulge. And in December, a couple days before Christmas, they had completely surrounded a small town called Bastogne. And this is my favorite story from World War II. I think it was the day before Christmas. One of the commanders of the American forces in Bastogne, a guy named Craig Abrams, went up to the top of a church tower, and he looked around with his binoculars, and he could see all the surrounding countryside, looked around with his binoculars, and everywhere he looked, every single point on the horizon, he could see German positions just a couple hundred yards away. And Craig Abrams turned to his adjutant and said, well, looks like they've got us completely surrounded. The poor bastards. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we are, right? I mean, that's where we are today in the pop culture. It looks like they've got us completely surrounded, those poor bastards. They own everything. They own movies, they own television, they own late night comedy, they own video games, they own online media, they own everything, they own everything. They've got us completely surrounded, the poor bastards. They don't know what's coming. They don't know what's coming to them. Because what's coming for them is something much bigger than politics, something much bigger than political parties, it's much bigger than elections. Historical forces of enormous magnitude are coming, and they are on our side. So for those of you who think there's nothing left to do for this country but to stock up on beans and ammo and move to Montana and wait for the inevitable end, first of all, it's not a bad idea to stock up on beans and ammo. But with that said, time is not on their side. Time is on our side. And I'm here tonight to tell you why time is on our side. So, let's get going. But before we do, let me try and give you some idea of what's at stake here. Now, I carry these props with me, and uh, 